And it took less than 24 hours for the New York Giants to decide that Pat Shermer will no longer be their head coach. And for the third time now in five seasons, the New York Giants will be looking for a new head coach. And the favorite I think a lot of the the, the fans wanted was Ron Rivera. However, it is apparent that he is likely going to sign with the Washington Redskins for next season. So now the question becomes, who will be the next head coach of the New York Giants? And this is kind of a mixed bag for me. Do I think the Shermer firing was justified? Yes. But I also feel like he was put in a difficult situation with this organization. And it doesn't help with the general manager. And I'll get into Gettleman in a second. But when we came into this season, do you remember the statement that this front office made, that John Mara made, that Eli Manning was going to be the starting quarterback? Eli Manning was going to be the leader of this team. And the only way Daniel Jones would be in would be a complete disaster. He was in not even a quarter way through the season. So this was a situation where Shermer was put into a no-win situation. He had Eli. He had Daniel Jones, the young quarterback, and probably through training camp, he wanted to start Daniel Jones week one. But the Giants because they were afraid of benching Eli like they did years ago for Geno Smith and the fans freaked out. We're like, you know what? We're going to give Eli every chance. And it only lasted barely half a season. So he was in a no-win situation. If he had been able to start Daniel Jones from week one, do I think the Giants would be any better? No. But I also feel that the Giants would have a better identity and Daniel Jones might be looking even better by the end of the season because he would have had more games under his belt. And let's not forget the Giants front half of the schedule was a lot easier than the back half of the schedule. I think he could have gotten some good games early on, built up his confidence and played well throughout the season. And the other albatross in the room was Eli Manning's contract. If they had cut him before the draft and picked a quarterback, like I think we all knew they were going to at some point, They would have had a lot of cap space. And what could they have done with that? They could have improved this defense, which has been a disaster. And I get it. And I understand. As the head coach, you're responsible for all assets of your teams. You're responsible for the offense, the defense, the special teams, and having an input with personnel with the general manager. That's how it's supposed to work. And to be fair, Pat Shermer's offense wasn't bad, and we did see Daniel Jones have success. But he also didn't have Saquon Barkley. He wasn't healthy for a majority of the season, even when he was playing. And that defense was a disaster. But that's not Shermer's specialty. But either way, the Giants are going to get a new head coach. And what they're looking for is apparently Matt Rule is rumored to be the front runner right now. It's still very early to tell um, which way the Giants are going. But I do have a feeling that their next head coach and what they're going to be looking for, I know they have those connections with the Giants. Like you look every head coach they seemingly hire had some connection to the Giants. And if Jason Garrett gets fired, I do think he will be considered. I know Giant fans don't want to hear that, but I do think he will be in consideration. But the biggest thing I think this team will be looking for will be a head coach. And people are say, well, wait a minute, isn't that kind of obvious? But If you really think about what happened the last two head coaching hires, they found guys that even though Shermer was a head coach at one point, they were mostly coordinators. I think they're going to look for guys that had head coaching success, whether it's bringing Mike McCarthy out of retirement, whether it's Matt Rule, even though he's a college coach, he's been a head coach and is widely regarded as a great prospect, especially as a coaching prospect moving forward. There's a lot of guys I think they're going to be looking at, but I don't think it's going to be looking at an innovative coordinator. Could they maybe go the offensive route again? It's a possibility. But I do think it is fascinating that they're keeping Gettleman. And I think part of the reason, too, is it's kind of like with the Jets last year with McCagnan. There's a little bit of, well, we got to keep him. He, He found our quarterback, right? He found Daniel Jones, and he pick Daniel Jones when no one thought it was a good pick, even though I thought it was a good pick if you go back to it, because I thought Daniel Jones was an underrated quarterback in last year's draft. But you look at the defensive roster they put out there, 
you look at the Leonard Williams trade, the Giants just gave the Jets a great third-round pick this year. They're also going to have to likely re-sign Leonard Williams. If they do, they get the fourth-round pick to the Jets. If they don't, they still give a fifth-round pick next year. But that's still a lot of draft capital for a guy who, like most Jet fans will tell you, pretty underwhelming. Andrew Lucky did get a couple good receivers in free agency. The offensive line is better. But that defense, the personnel, was absolutely terrible this year. It was horrible. And I get it. Gettleman's drafted Barkley. Gettleman has drafted Daniel Jones. But this is the one thing I would worry about with the Giants. Let's say they hire a new head coach, right? If Gettleman has a bad draft, if Gettleman does a poor job this offseason and the roster doesn't dramatically improve and this team still struggles next year, the Giants are kind of in an awkward position that the Jets have found themselves in for the last decade. And I know a lot of Jet fans want to see Adam Gase fired, but the Jets want to have some continuity in there, and they want to have a general manager and a head coach on the same page. And unfortunately, if you move on from Gettleman next year, you bring in another general manager, are you going to hurt yourself by not getting the best candidate? Because you might get a guy who is the best candidate but he doesn't like the head coach you have. I mean, that was a big problem for the Jets last decade and part of the reason why the Jets have struggled in New York because they haven't had consistency and they've hired the general manager and the coach separately and it has not worked. That would be my only worry about this is if you can find a guy that works great with Gettleman, fine. That's why I thought the Ron Rivera connection because they worked together in Carolina. From all accounts, they they worked well together. I was thinking, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But if you get a guy like a Mike McCarthy, I do think McCarthy's going to want to have a lot of control and will get him at relent. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure how much power he's willing to give up. You look at Matt Rule. Rule's in a great situation. Rule, it has to be the perfect situation for him because he can go back to Baylor He can continue to have a great program like he's doing, make a lot of money in college. He could move up to a bigger college job potentially. I mean, he's like Lincoln Riley. They're in great situations. They don't have to leave. They can pick and choose the perfect situation. And Rule might not love Daniel Jones. Rule might not love this roster. Rule might not like this general manager. And Rule might be a little bit burned from the Jets last year who told him that he had to get staff that they want because they were worried about as an experience. Now, do I think the Giants will allow them to get coaching staff? Sure, but could it be general manager? Could they get along with Matt Rule? I don't know. It's a fascinating thing to debate because Rule's in a great situation. And for all these fans that are saying, oh, Lincoln Riley's going to come out. Oh, Matt Rule's going to come out. College football's different. There's so much money in college football now. You make more in college football, and if you can recruit and you build a great culture like Rule has done in Baylor, you can win 10, 11 games easy every year because you have a talented roster. And Rule's a great coach. Don't get me wrong. He is a fantastic coach. But just because the NFL calls doesn't mean they have to answer. Because if they do well at that college job, they'd never have to leave that college job. I mean, you look right now, Nick Saban, people are like, why doesn't he ever come back? Why would he leave Alabama? It's easy for him to recruit now. He's in a great situation. And every year, you know he's going to have one of the top three rosters in college football. You look at Matt Rule right now, why would he necessarily want to leave? He's seen the turnover in New York. Couldn't he not argue saying, hey, last four years, you've already moved on from two head coaches. If I struggle out of the gate early with Gettleman, you bring in another general manager. Does that mean you're going to keep me? So it is interesting that Gettleman for now is keeping his job. I do think he's getting it partially, and I think this is part of the reason because I personally talked to Christopher Johnson with the Jets about Sam Darnold and how much they loved the kid and how excited they were and how they didn't think they were going to get him. And I do feel that part of the reason they kept McCagnan longer than they probably should have was because they felt that they owed him one because he got them their quarterback. And I think the Giants are a little bit in that situation right now. Because Gettleman has found a kid in Daniel Jones that they feel can be their franchise quarterback for the next 10 to 15 years. And he gave them a good transition from Eli to Daniel Jones. 
And unfortunately for Shermer, he was caught in the crosshairs because this was a fan base and a front office that sold the fan base that this was going to be a year they were going to be competitive with Eli Manning at the helm. And then early through the season, it was clear they need to move on to the young quarterback. And if they had made that decision earlier, maybe they could have gotten more pieces on this defense and they could have been more competitive because this division, look at the Eagles right now. You look at the Cowboys. They're not in great positions. This was a year where they were vulnerable as the Giants could have gotten maybe a couple more defensive pieces out there. It's not crazy to think that they could have been in that 7-9, and 8-8 eight and eight range and at least have been competitive Week 17. It's not completely out of the realm. Now, I do think Shermer was not going to be long. I didn't think he was the long-term answer at the head coach anyways. I think he's better as an offensive coordinator. Some guys just are. But for the New York Giants, when they look for their next head coach, once again, head coach, they need to find a head coach. Not one of these coordinators because they've gone the coordinator out twice and it hasn't worked. But you need to find a guy that will continue to help develop Daniel Jones. But now, more importantly, work with Dave Gettleman. And the Giants now are in a tricky situation with this hire because they have to get a guy that will work well with Gettleman. Because if it doesn't work well, you could have a situation like the Crosstown Jets had. Where you have a coach and a general manager having different opinions. And... I think this offseason, you saw it a little bit with the Giants previously. I think that the front office really wanted this to be the Eli farewell tour. I really think that they wanted Eli to play well, play at least eight games. And if it wasn't going well, make the transition to Daniel Jones. But realistically, Daniel Jones doesn't play a snap this year. And it did not go that way. And to his credit, Shermer helped Dan Jones look good. I know there was the fumbling issue that they'll have to address in the offseason. But there were some games, you looked at Daniel Jones and you're like, this kid can play. This kid can play. And you have to give Shermer some credit for that. Do I think he was a great head coach? No. But you also have to look at the situation too where this team, they need a head coach that can handle both the offense and the defense. So it'll be interesting. We'll definitely give you our thoughts and opinions on that with who they hire. I'll give you what I think of the hiring. And most importantly, how I think it's going to work with Daniel Jones and Gettleman moving forward.